Imagine you watching WWE as a kid. You decide you're going to be a wrestler. You practice your craft. You work your way through the indie scene. You make it to WWE. Vince McMahon handpicks you as the next big thing. But you don't quite reach that brass ring. You end up getting released by WWE. Just to come back years later. Reinvented. Rejuvenated. Hungry. Passionate. You go to NXT. You're already a star. You come back to WWE. And you kind of just flounder around people know who you are but you're you're not the guy yet then you go to the royal rumble and people start chanting your name people start really getting behind you even more people want you to be the guy but it just doesn't seem like management feels the same way but eventually you become the guy win the Royal Rumble. You're going to headline WrestleMania. The thing that you've been dreaming about since you was a kid. Headlining the biggest pay-per-view of the year. Main eventing against a top star. You finally overcome the odds. You beat that said star. And you're the guy. And imagine all of that happening, you overcoming everything, years of hard work, to no pyro, no crowd chanting you deserve it, just silence. Imagine that moment being reduced to silence. I said it yesterday. And I'm going to say it here once again. WrestleMania is not the same without the crowds. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. And I just finished watching WrestleMania 36, night two. It's weird to say. Um, I enjoyed night two more than I enjoyed uh, night one. And the reason why is because I felt like these matches on this particular night were more engaging more intense surprisingly for me um not to say that some of the matches last night weren't good i just felt like i wasn't you know feeling them as much as i should be and maybe it was because i i kind of i guess you could say gotten used to wrestlemania with no crowd so it kind of is easier to digest here since yesterday i wasn't sure how i was gonna kind of process everything but um i enjoyed a lot more of the matches man we're kind of kind of go down the list of just the matches that i was enjoying and and kind of give my thoughts on everything the first match i was uh enjoying was the charlotte flair versus um Rhea Ripley match and I was enjoying it man I think the crowd if there was a crowd there I think the crowd would have been very invested into this match um I'm sure the crowd would have been pro Rhea Ripley I like the story line within the match of Charlotte working over Rhea Ripley, uh, Rhea Ripley's leg trying to get that advantage and Rhea Ripley had a good showing I don't agree with the finish this is probably is this match in the the woman six pack challenge match that I didn't agree with the finish so much, but I'll get into that later on. But definitely, uh, I wasn't a big fan of the finish. I don't feel like Charlotte should have won this match, but I'm not sure where they go with this feud. I'm not sure if the feud just ends and uh, we just go on to another potential feud. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I wasn't really feeling this match too much. To, well, the ending of the match, the match itself was very entertaining. I 
this is one of the matches that probably would have did well with the crowd but i just didn't like the ending i'm just it's it's just me i'm just tired of charlotte flair winning like all her major like pay-per-view matches where she's having a title uh i don't i think she's i think she may have only lost one time at wrestlemania correct me if i'm wrong i could be wrong let me know in the comment section below but she hasn't lost that many times at wrestlemania i'm not saying that she should but i'm just saying like i'm i just i don't think it's good for creating new stars i think if charlotte would have lost this match it creates a new star in rhea ripley the same way i feel like charlotte should have lost to oscar it creates a new star charlotte is already solidified i don't know how many championship titles she has she's already solidified she doesn't need another championship under her belt so i wasn't a big fan of that but the match was entertaining i enjoyed it um the match that i really really sold me on night two and was my favorite match of both nights in my opinion and i figured it was going to be edge versus randy orton was so goddamn good i don't even know what to say other than those guys killed it bro those guys legit killed it this match works without a crowd it would work probably even better with the crowd but i, I like the intimate feeling of it's just these two are trying to kill each other the promo package before the match was so good this was a great match this whole build towards wrestlemania between these two has been the best build to a wrestlemania match in a while i think recently probably a, a good build was uh kofi kingston's run last year that was a good good build to a wrestlemania uh, his match between uh, uh him and Daniel Bryan, but this is this was so good because there was some history behind this these two wrestlers. Like there's some personal like like love for each other, and then betrayal. Like the ultimate story, somebody that you thought was really close, and they betray someone that they were really close with, and it, it's so great. This was this is how you book. A match for wrestlemania and i must say um i just like randy orton's mannerisms throughout the match which benefits the crowd not being there because you can hear randy talking to him and it's so great because randy's so delusional he's over here basically saying look bro I'm, I'm i'm beating your ass because i care for you bro i'm gonna put you out your misery it's okay i love you like stuff like that like that was so good edge facial expressions as he's just beating down randy orton he's giving this primal rage scream he has this deranged look it's so good bro like the just the hits the impact throughout the whole match them going into the back area in the weight room like they're in this little office conference area they're just destroying each other and each hit each blow you can feel it they're selling it 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 was so great i think one of the spots that i enjoyed was the when they got on top of the semi trailers like randy orton's going for his punt kick edge sees it coming hits him with a nasty spear and randy sold that spear like he got cut in half oh it was so good bro so good and right when uh um randy was gonna hit him with the concerto he got up at the last minute hit him with a nice submission move he put on uh mvp a couple weeks back laid him out had him pass out and then i love this line the ref is counting to 10 and he told the ref to shut the fuck up <laughs> stop fucking counting oh that was so fucking great that was so great picked up the chair and the acting in this match alone was so great edge selling like this like it's like he's about to cry because he knows what he has to do 
he's like he's just got this look of like he doesn't want to do it but he has to he calms down takes a deep breath hit the meanest most satisfying concerto that you've seen in a while because people wanted him to finally get his revenge on randy orton he hit it randy is selling it like he just got murdered and the match ends with uh edge being the uh the last man standing he's kneeling over randy and he's like he's just like sad because he had to do that and it, it was so good fantastic match favorite match of the night hands down favorite match of both nights hands down um let's get into the uh six-pack woman uh championship match um i kind of skimmed through that things were starting to pick up towards the end of this match between sasha banks bailey and lacey evans and what's crazy is there's like a little situation where bailey and sasha are going back and forth and bailey kind of pushes sasha away from lacey ellen uh lacey evans she's about to hit her her woman's right on her she pushes her away but then uh lacey evans is still able to hit her finishing move on her and you can see in the background and the announcers kind of talk about this bailey could have got up and like stopped the, the cover but she never did she never got up and ultimately sasha got eliminated so they were having a little you know little little argument in a ring ultimately she gets eliminated then sasha comes out of nowhere and helps bailey retain the title she attacks uh lacey evans from behind so, uh bailey's able to hit her finisher and helps uh bailey retain the title i'm okay with that finish and the reason why i'm okay with that finish is because you can tell they're planting seeds she hand sasha hands bailey the title and you can tell sasha's gonna turn on her you don't know when you don't know where but sasha's gonna turn on her so i like that that was probably the only interesting thing about that match other than that, i didn't really too much care about everything else that happened in that match now the the weirdest segment of both nights hands down was the firefly funhouse I can't even put into words what I just watched. I'm not going to lie to you. That wasn't a wrestling match. That was just, it was like a, a, a segment. It was it was entertaining as hell. I loved it. I, I thought that was really dope. The Boneyard match was cool. I'm not going to lie to you. That was one of the better things of night one. Night two, outside of the Edge and Randy Orton match, entertaining wise this was this was great it's like you go through bray wyatt's and john cena's history you go through john cena's path from the ruthless aggression era all the way to where he is now i like bro, i can't even describe to you you just have to go watch that match if you haven't seen it it's not really a match it's like a segment you gotta go watch it this was so inner entertaining oh it was so good i think one of the things that was really good about this segment is when they had john cena come out to his word life gimmick cut like a little rap promo on bray and bray actually was dropping some truth yo john you're the chosen one like you can do no wrong like i'm the one that's had to work hard to get where i'm at just to lose and fail you you always get chosen to you know do great you you've been put in that situation and i like how he he's like spinning it like he's basically saying john the, the higher ups have handpicked you you were never going to lose me i wasn't handpicked i had to figure stuff out and it's the it's the truth He's the one character in WWE that's been repackaged twice. And the last two times he got repackaged, he got himself over just to lose. And if you want to be honest, John Cena was the, 
the start of his downward spiral they showed an actual little segment of him like in his Bray Wyatt like character and they they cut to like a little flashback at Wrestlemania 30 where the whole crowd was so ready for Bray to win the whole crowd was pro Bray Bray Wyatt and he said you wasn't listening to them John and they have this little like clip of the crowd just saying he got the whole world in his hands singing it it was it was dope it's so much truth because at the end of the day when he lost that match at wrestlemania 30 he was never really the same he wasn't because it was like as john cena he's the guy that you need to beat to be the next guy up so it, it kind of sucked that he never got that win at wrestlemania 30 but ultimately he got his his win five years later five six years later um like i said it wasn't a traditional match ultimately uh bray did get the win i wish he would have the title i think they probably would have more of a traditional match if he had the title but i think it still would have been even more effective if uh, the fiend was still the champion that way he would be able to beat john and keep his championship but must say that was hella entertaining i enjoyed it it was hella funny i can't really just go into too much detail but just know if you guys have not seen the john cena versus bray wyatt firefly funhouse match go watch it very entertaining it's, it's entertaining as hell um let's see uh i did watch the tag team championship match um it wasn't that bad it was entertaining um i think the crowd if there was a crowd it definitely would have benefited from being there but uh it was it was cool it was cool seeing at the end of the match when they did one win that uh bianca belair came out there to help her husband um and that was that was pretty cool that was a nice little nice little mini wrestlemania moment um but um street profits retain uh their championship belts which i'm okay with and the match that i was really worried about the main event match between brock lesnar and drew mcintyre i'm so happy that drew won i just wish the crowd was there oh my god i wish the crowd was there man the crowd deserves to be there for a match like that imagine if that match took place at wrestlemania that's the main event the last match the crowd would have popped there's so many things that happened in this match that would have made the crowd pop first and foremost the fact that drew mcintyre kicked out of the f5 at the count of one would have made the crowd pop he kicked out another f5 crowd would have lost it he kicked out of another F5. He kicked out of like three F5s, if I'm not mistaken. Hell, the Undertaker didn't kick out of three F5s. <laughs> if yeah, at WrestleMania, I think I think it took three F5s to put him down. He kicked out of three. Kicked out of three F5s. Crowd would have been so hype. And he hit uh Brock with four. Uh he hit Brock with four Claymores. One, two, three over i get it it's not a technical match brock is not gonna give you too many technical matches i mean he can but this wasn't that situation it was pretty much finishers but it worked and i think the crowd would have loved it i think it's more so setting up for drew mcintyre's moment and it just sucked because i'm glad that he won and i'm glad wwe made the right choice thank god they at least made the right choice here i just i just really wish drew had the fireworks and the crowd chanting his name and chanting you deserve it because he does deserve it so hopefully this little pandemic situation can go away so we can get some crowds back into the stadium so these wrestlers can get the proper cheers that they deserve because like I said at the beginning of this video, you work your entire life to get to that moment only to receive no cheers. Kind of sucks. But but yeah, man. WrestleMania 36. 
both nights not bad on the first night the second night was way more enjoyable um overall for me wrestlemania was okay it was okay i think it would have been a much better wrestlemania like i like i keep saying if there were crowds there but this was this was okay it was entertaining i wasn't bored there's some wrestlemanias out there that completely bored me this wrestlemania would definitely stick with me for the simple fact this is the first wrestlemania with no crowd but they actually did something different they made the best use of what they could with what they had and honestly they put on a, a pretty decent show so overall i enjoyed for the most part wrestlemania 36 definitely enjoyed night two more than night one but i want to get your thoughts and opinions did you guys enjoy wrestlemania as a whole this year did you prefer night one or did you prefer night two were you okay with the booking decisions of this year's wrestlemania comment down below let's have a discussion i appreciate all the love and support from you guys and i got something in the works for you guys man just know i'm getting some new equipment hopefully this week so be on the lookout for some videos later on this week with some some better quality man i, I just want to give y'all the best content and be ready for some more frequent uploads because once i get this new equipment sky's the limit road to 10k but i appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace